and we're recording. Okay. Welcome to our Tech Talk with Susan Pascarelli. I'm Lauren Smith, and I'm one of the co-founders of the Taos Abstract Artist Collective, along with Aaliyah Horline and Carrie Bell. There's Aaliyah. Hey, Aaliyah. Um, and I don't know if Carrie is here with us yet, um, but we started the Abstract Artist Collective a couple of years ago, and it's been really taking off. And so lots of you follow us online. We've also had um, a wonderful inaugural exhibition last September, and um, we are really excited to announce our next show. I have our little postcard, which if you are local, you'll start to see this around town and on social media. But we are um, we are organizing alongside the Taos Center for the Arts, a show called Viewpoint Abstract, Minil Abstract Minimalism in Taos, New Mexico. And it has 13 Taos-based artists. We brought in a guest curator, Hillary Nelson, who is a professor um, of art and sculpture. And we're really excited for that. The opening is March 31st from five to seven at the Taos Center for the Arts. So if you're local or remotely local, please join us. We're super, um, we're super excited for this exhibition and lots of new things to come. Our Tac Talk series is also um, rolling and running and we will be looking forward to you hosting oh there's Carrie Carrie hey <laughs> Carrie is our other co-founder um we will be running our tech talks through right up into our next member show in October um and then we'll probably take a little uh pause in the end of the year but we have Bob Horline who will be doing a tech talk hey Bob I see you in the audience and we have C Marquez as well and um, a few other folks that are going to be popping in. So stay tuned. Um, just a brief note about who we are. I'm just going to read this. I have not yet committed it to memory. Um, but the Taos Abstract Artist Collective promotes abstract artists working in or near Taos, New Mexico, towards the exchange of ideas, new aesthetics, and creative concepts. Taos is synonymous with abstract thinking, with origins in indigenous geometries, transcendental and modernist movements, and conceptual land art installation. Once the nexus for westward bound artists, Taos unleashes expansive abstract thinkers. We are excited to have members. Um, we don't have a membership fee, but we have a lot of members and represented amongst our, our group are established mid-career and emerging artists who show in Taos or Northern New Mexico, nationally and internationally. Um, we have quite a broad reach. So with that said, um, today we're going to be showing our short film. Um, the format of Attack Talk is a pre-recorded short film produced and directed by Mark Smith, our resident videographer, and um, then we'll have a chance to have a Q&A with all of us here, a chance to talk to Susan, ask some questions, and keep the dialogue going. Um, I, at the end, will open it up in case anyone else has announcements about art things that are happening in the area. Um, we are a community-based group. We want to hear from all of you. So, um, with that said, I want to actually turn it over to Susan really briefly, just for uh, brief remarks before we get started. Susan, uh, thank you again so much for being here. Susan is a Taos-based painter. Um, we had just a, such a delightful visit, Mark and I, to your studio and your home. And thank you for welcoming us. And um, we're really excited today to have this dialogue. So I'm gonna bounce it over to you before we show the film. Oh, and you're muted. I'm gonna ask you to unmute yourself really quickly. Okay, are we good? If you're on your if you're on your iPad, you might just have to click unmute on your iPad or on your computer. We'll just do that for one second. I unfortunately can't. Oh, there you go. Perfect. Are we good? And yeah. volume. Okay. Um, a couple things I wanted to say before the talk, and it's um, it's pretty important to me because I I wouldn't have the life that I have had and have now uh, without um, Charlie. Uh, I met him when I was 19. He was my college professor, and we spent 50 incredible years together. And um, and he really supported me, and uh, and so I want to uh, to 
say that about him. And also I want to thank uh, K Contemporary, um, which is my gallery in Santa Fe. And um, Carla, um, the owner, has been very supportive. And I'm grateful because um, my work isn't always that easy. So um, so that's what I wanted to say. I'm now muted. Thank you so much, Susan. Um, very delighted. And so everybody, um, we will ask everyone to mute yourselves during the, the film. That's about 26 minutes, I think, Mark, is what we timed out at. And then we'll come back together. So um, give me a moment while I do my own tech support over here and get our screen shared. What's happening? I'm a devoted, devoted artist, but I, it's, it has to be everything for me. You know, it's gotta be fun. It feels very cozy in here today with the snow outside and it's really lovely to be surrounded by all of your work. Thank you. So thanks for doing this artist studio and interview. Mm -hmm. We'll just jump right in. Let's jump right Let's in. Let's jump right in. Yes. Um, we're surrounded by by all of your work in your home. Mm -hmm. And so one of the first things that you said to me when we first met was that my home is my studio. It is. And I know folks say that, but your home is truly your studio space. Everywhere you look, there's art and process of art. In, that's, you know. that's exactly right. In fact, I refer to it as I have several art stations oh, I love and that. I refer to them that way. And so in the morning, I have an art station. In the, in the later morning, I have an art station. I have an art station in there and I have a traveling art station. So uh, I'd like to think of it that way. That's wonderful. I mean, when we've talked about the day and how it unfolds, and I would like yes. to talk a little bit about that. Can you yes. start us at the beginning of your day yes. and maybe walk us through? Because I know it's, um, we've used the word routine, There's yes. or discipline or yes. routine, the yeah. relationship between yeah. the two. And, and a strong love, just strong desire. Um, and this is, you know, this is not for everybody. I just want to make sure okay. that you know that. Disclaimer accepted. Um, yeah. Um, I get up in the morning and actually I sit right here looking out and um, since the, uh, uh, I lived in Philadelphia for 30 years. Um, we had just a tiny little sliver of, um, of sky. And so I love to look at the sky and the meteor showers. And I know when they are and when they can occur. And I thank them every time I see them. And I also, um, while I'm doing that, I have on the side, um, actually it's this little uh, table over there where I make marks and uh, or lines I think is more appropriate and so I make a line every eight minutes and without looking at it and I just love to look at them I love to look at them and um, and that's the very first mark that you make that's the very first the mark day. and so I get up in the morning with a pot of tea and um, I look outside and somewhere I heard that um, there's some certain things that happen in the mind in the early morning. And I've always been an early riser, so I get up at 4 a.m. And um, my first thing that I do is I make lines in this book. And I don't see the lines, uh, but I feel them. It's like uh, I'll make a fast line or I'll make a slow line. And, and then it's the, the joy of that is looking at them after I'm done, you know, so it's like a little treat, you know, that's what it feels like, you know, oh, that, you know, and so uh, that's how I start my day. 
Uh, then I go into the studio, and that's much more formal. Okay. That is the most formal part of my, my life, my work. Um, and I'll work, oh, three, two or three or four hours, and then I come back to it. Um, and uh, after I'm done, I do, I do some Qigong practice, which I feel is very much relevant to my, it, it, it ties in with my painting. Just the vibrational or something like that. Um, and, uh, and then after that, I'll watch TV for an hour and then I'll go into that station in, uh, in the bedroom and do little watercolors, like one a day. Um, and they're very whimsical and uh, it's a nice way to, I relax and I just love, it's, that part is very freeing because it, my studio work, I have to be precise. If I make a mistake, you know, it just doesn't work for the whole painting. And they do take some time to make. Um, so I need that, um, that, that energy, that uh, letting out energy, uh, whimsical. I refer to it as whimsical, but I need to have fun. I, you know, it's like, uh, I'm a devoted, devoted artist, but I, it's, it has to be everything for me. You know, it's gotta be fun. And, um, and so just spreading the paint just feels good knowing that I don't have to present it to anybody. It just, I just love that quality of, um, putting down a watercolor wash and, uh, and then looking at the color and then maybe seeing what shapes or forms um, I, I'll pull out. Um, and so that's my afternoon. And then in the evening, I'll sit um, with a beer and uh, draw in my iPad. And that work is um, very much naturalistic or perceptual or realistic or whatever. Um, but I enjoy that as well because I relax with it. It's just a way for me to relax and I love to look, you know. And so with those, I, I feel they're like genre uh, drawings. They're inside and outside. And, um, and that's, a, I've been doing this for quite a while and I have a few people that I send out these digital drawings to. Uh, so that's really fun. And um, uh, overall, I, you know, that's like a perfect day for it feels me. It's like a full day to me. Well, it is from morning till night. Yeah. You know, when I don't have to do anything, that's what I do. Yeah. And I feel most comfortable. Yeah. Um, uh, I enjoy my own company. Yeah. I do. And, you know, with art, and then I have my cat over there. He's looking out. Um, so that's pretty much, you know, my day. I like what you're talking about, you know, I'm struck by the idea of relationships. A lot of what you're describing in your practice is solitary in yes. a way, and there's so many different relationship offshoots from your practice. So whether it's a relationship to the space of your house or relationship to the genre drawings or the yes. material yes. that you're working through. So yes. solitary and relational almost at the same time having a dialogue with one another or something that's yes, coming forward. That's a good point, yes. And um, uh, I guess we're gonna get to the kind of source of, of uh, my paintings. Mm -hmm. um, uh, and that's, that's, the, that's the real work part. Uh, well, we should, let's talk about it because yeah, you're yeah. referencing nature, um, you're referencing line, contour, all of these uh, words and phrases are have have a um, a connection to some of the originating images from nature that you've shown me, um, particularly the photographs in Utah. That I'd love to hear a little bit more about yeah, that, okay. and we'll yeah. we'll share those with the audience as okay. well. Um, well, uh, uh, with my work, it's totally abstract, it, you know, but to me, it isn't because it relates very much to nature. Um, I guess uh, when I was a child, I really loved um, this land. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, I would, I like to think in my work, um, in my formal work, that it has a kind of resonance um, uh, it, with the land. And, um, and basically, um, I do 
waveforms, which you'll see. And um, I started out doing um, uh, repetitive, what I call glyphs. And there are a few here on the wall. And, um, and then from that, I decided to get very expansive because I live in space, you know, I can see Colorado and I mean, I never imagined, yeah. you know, where I come from that I would be living in a place like this that I so deeply love, mm -hmm. the land and the mountains have so much presence and, and just the, just the, the space, you know, and I, I, I love that. I'm passionate about yeah. that. It comes forward. I mean, and in the the photographs that you were showing, um, particularly reference a gradient. So, could you speak a little bit about your relationship to the idea of gradient? I know we'll look at pieces very, and um, we'll look at the detail. We see it here, but we'll look, yes. go into your studio and we'll look more. Okay, the gradient. Where did it or originate for you in your practice? Um, I guess relative yes. to the photos. Um, so. As a youngster, I just like to repeat things and, and just go over it. And, and somehow, for me, that was a place of comfort. Um, and uh, it still is. And uh, so I, I lay in watercolor washes um, on a pretty large surface for the medium that I use. And uh, I, I can... Um, work with very, very light tints uh, of uh, layered color, watercolor. And I, I love the medium. It's so delicate and, and uh, I don't, it's just a love. And, um, and so I make these paintings and I, I don't really know which color is gonna go next, but I have kind of an idea, but when we go into the studio, you'll see that there are these uh, sort of radiance. There's a little radiance that comes from layering, and, and that idea goes to the layering of the land. You know, uh, for example, um, in Utah, uh, the goosenecks, in fact, that's where I got the idea, uh, that you can see the sediment the layers of the land, and I thought, and tree rings as well. And that applies to, you know, my idea with the light rings. It was just this recording of time. Sure. And so that's interesting to me because I, I mentioned to you before, I think all art in a way is contemporary, even, you know, the cave art. And so I kind of, you know, in my wanderings uh, of my imagination, I, I try to tune in on that, you know? And, and honestly, that's very difficult to do when you have a lot of other things to do. It really is sure. difficult. So, um, so by nature, uh, I'm a solitary person, I think. And um, I like it. I love it. I love it. And I'm passionate about art. Anybody, I mean, it's a gift just to be able to do it, you know? It comes through. I feel oh, it in the house. Good, good. Um, and and the, we were talking about the, the change or transition between spending a lot of time on the East Coast in yeah. Philadelphia versus here out yeah. West. Yes. It sounds like your relationship to the West um, coincided or coexisted with your time spent while you were in Philadelphia? Well, that time really was, uh, it was um, a very good time. I, uh, that's where I, I went to graduate school and um, I met a lot of artists and, and went to a lot of shows. And in New York, uh, at that time, New York was more, more important, I think, as an art center. And, and so I think I was at the tail end of that maybe. And, uh, oh my goodness, the museums are equal to the landscape. Sure. And I love, you Part know. Part of the la natural landscape yes. of New York City, right? Yes, yes. We were talking about light and we're talking about material. And in looking at your earlier work, that was when you were back east, you were using gouache on a black surface. Correct. And then there was the sort of inversion that seems to have yes. taken place yes. coming out here because yes. You're applying, um, 
it's light. applying it's I was going to say applying light to a white yes. surface but light and color and luminosity I mean yes. truly there is I mean the in your light ring series it's it it is what it sounds like it's yes. as if they are lit from within and it's that is a, an extremely I love technical I just love that I mean it is an extremely technical um accomplishment yes. in art making and yes. I don't know and I just found myself doing yeah. it it wasn't it, it, I can't say that it was intentional really okay. you know intuitive just, maybe uh well definitely that yeah. uh, imp I call I <laughs> refer to it as an impulse okay but, um, well talk to us a little bit about I impulse I like this what you've mentioned a few times about impulse um well that's the impulse that I just started with I think in my life um I had that kind of energy um uh and it wasn't, you know, as a child, I was not encouraged to make art, you know, in fact, I, quite the opposite. My parents thought that I would, you know, it would be terrible, you know, because there's no way of making money. But then um, I went to school and learned uh, that I could teach. Mm -hmm. And so I, um, I decided to go to school and give it everything that I had, and I loved it. My education was terrific, really. I mean, I, I studied art history at Berkeley, and um, and <laughs> I studied with some very, very uh, influential uh, thinkers. Uh, Herschel B. Chip, um, great art historian, a modernist. I studied modernism. And, um, and then, and see, all the while, I kept doing my own work. And um, I felt like I had to learn art history. I wanted to learn it. I still love art history. And um, uh, so there's that. And then I went back to the East and, and worked with some um, New York painters, you know, very successful and, um, and happening at the time. And Philip Perlstein, um, Lee Bontecu was great. Um, and she was very, uh, you know, she was big uh, during her lifetime, and she cut out of that whole, it was a men's group. Sure. Well, I can tell you this, and I'll be absolutely honest, I never really uh, had a mindset that women were under-recognized, and that could be a naivete yeah. on my part, and, and, and it is, uh, you know, because women in some many ways have been. But personally, my experience was never that. Yeah. I never, I, I love, I mean, I like the abstract expressionists. I also like the Ninth Street Women, you know, that book. Um, but, you know, it's Barnett, Newman, Ad Reinhardt, Pollock, all of those, Franz Klein. I just, you know, I say yes to it. And I know they were, you know, very, um, what's the word? Uh, um, problematic? Not, not, well, maybe problematic, but In also aspects. it was about the men. And, sure. you know, and I actually learned that later. You know, I, I, I just right. feel it was a kind of naivete, a okay. blessed naivete, really, for me. Because the whole women issue was not an issue for me personally. Well, does like that your, make sense? It does. It sounds like your practice created um, a cont I guess this is how I'm interpreting it, a bit of a container for you to really focus. I mean, you, it, and it still does. Yes. And, and so I think, I'm in that world. And that, I mean, that's wonderful. And I think so many of us are in that way with that relationship to our work. And now, um, for various reasons, that dialogue around, you know, let's go back and revisit history yes. pub like in a public way yes. in yes. curatorial way in yes. media yes. Um, yes. you know across the landscape of uh, yes. you know capitalism etc yes. you know so we, we're looking at it through a different lens now yes. so there's one thing to yes. have our own practice and, and to feel that yeah. buffering yeah. and yeah. then to look at it through maybe this historical lens yes. now and we have we can look at you know the expressionists and we can see um, well, I love Joan Mitchell. Sure. Oh, my goodness, yes. And there are so many. I mean, you have quite an art history library. That was I the do. first thing I noticed when mm -hmm. I came in, and I think if I weren't an artist, I would probably have been a librarian because reading is absolutely my favorite thing, and reading yeah. art books is just yes. absolutely yeah. a dream. Which so. is another practice that I do yeah. in the afternoon. I like Right now I'm looking at 15th century Flemish painting, oh, and wow. it blows my mind. It's, it's so just technical so technical also. 
Yes, yes. Is, is that what you yes. notice? That's what I notice when uh, I think about no, it. No, I think what I notice about that, in fact, that's one of the one of the avenues that I fell in love with art in, in, in when I started to go to school um, and study art history was the 15th century Flemish painters. Um, and it was, there's something about the energy that comes from that work, the intensity, the attention to detail, the focus, all of that. I just... Yeah. I, it's like otherworldly to me, and I do have that part in my in my whole being of otherworldliness. You know, just mm -hmm. like I like to wonder, mm -hmm. and so that was a so. And I'm revisiting that period of art right now. You know, that's when oil painting first started sure. with the Van Eyck's. Sure, I yeah. love that as well. I remember, yes. recall that from my color. my yes. early really saturated color yes. and, and the. Um, uh, it's well, a certain degree of luminosity, but there's sort of sheen on everything, yes, right? Well put. And yes. um, there's also quite a bit of symbology built yes. into those. So that's Absolutely. the part that I really resonate with because yeah. you look at the still life and you say, okay, I see the fruit, I see the lobster claw, I see yeah. the you know the plates, yes. but there's so much happening um, in terms of this embedded narratives and embedded narratives and also just speaking about the time and what they were permitted to do sure. the um as i understand it the early flemish primitives and and perhaps other t others too um they found their expression in drapery okay. and um it, because you know they were told by the church what to do and sure. then they had to have the patron in the painting and there were lots of restrictions sure. um and i'm not that much of an art historian expert, but um, but I like that idea of finding, you know, ways uh, and little metaphors, as you call them, and symbols. Uh, I think that's a great idea. I just think it's a great idea. Like these these pieces right here, they are they're just um, uh, uh, colors and gradated colors, but I. Think of them as code talk. Oh, That's what I call them okay. because, you know, they're all different and and um, they each have a certain kind of resonance and uh, and so to me, I'm code talking with right. those, and they're here and they're everywhere. I like that you said that because there is a little bit of that. Yeah, it's like a, a message, a, a message in a bottle or a symbol, and yes. you know, there, that was present with the Flemish paintings, a sort of. Um, a story within a painting and if you yes. look closely yes. there's a mystery to yes. it I always love that too yes. we could probably talk about that <laughs> yeah. yeah there's some mystery yeah. in there um, so you know I love mystery um, I guess you know it kind of brings up if you're thinking about sort of the, the idea of code and the idea of language it makes me jump back to the relationship between your modality so you work digitally and you also work in an uh, analog way here yes. with your paints, yes. with watercolor specifically, which is one yes. of the earliest yes. forms yes. of pigment, yes. um, can be created through and is frequently created with natural elements. And so there's a bit of yes. another dialogue that seems to be... Well, I have something embedded. to say about that, okay. actually. Um, digitally, I work... Um, I don't use the uh, the tools that... that you know, that you can do to make digital art, like yours, for example, mm -hmm. that have that are flowing and, and have that quality. I'm using it in the most traditional of ways, you know, like, and the thing about that is that I can get a lot done in two hours. I can get sure. a whole drawing and and I I just love that. Something and something enticing it, about that too. Well, it's very enticing, uh, but you can't do that with any other medium. You know, and so in I use the 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 newer um, modality, the digital, uh, in a traditional way. Sure. So uh, that somehow seems important to me, or or just it's like some you know like cool thing. You know, I mean, I I think that it helps us get the ideas out faster. And if you are someone that has a lot of ideas, I do. which you do, I do, right, and that relate uh, that resonates with me too. How do we get our ideas out as quickly as possible yes, and yes. Um, what's the vehicle so yes. the digital vehicle really is it's very you good well. you know I mean other it, I in two hours I can do something that used to be uh, needed 
uh, two weeks, perhaps, sure. you know, of painting or, or some other medium. Sure, know. I mean, you're creating work, it sounds like, on a daily basis, digitally, yes. and can distribute it immediately, right? Yes. Which is great. Yes. And then thinking about the juxtaposition of that with your watercolor, which obviously watercolor is notorious for the dry time, so you, yes, you know, and yes. I mean, I have to on say, I you use work. an air dryer. Do you? <laughs> I do. Okay. I have to, you know, with that work. Of course. Yeah. I mean, to to achieve that, uh, the quality of your work, I imagine that you needed. You need a little bit of. Um, I need help. Help yes, to expedite I need help that to process. do that. I need well, help. Well, otherwise it would slow things down dramatically. Oh my goodness! Yes. Can you imagine? Yes. How long would it typically take to create one of the large, um, the larger watercolor gradient pieces? Well, I could say right now I'm working on twenty by twenty. Okay. And so a week and a half. Okay. You know, of Dedicated two or three hours a day. Yep. Absolutely, okay. yeah, and. Um, you know, um, ironically, I seem to produce them pretty quickly, yeah. you know? Do you know, as you're going in um, to a piece, in terms of the palette, because you have so many Good studies, yes. and when I think about, and I've talked with so many artists, and I think about my own practice, sometimes I have an idea of the atmosphere or the quality of feeling related to color before yes. going in, yes. and I wonder if that's something that resonates with you. Well, it does, and, um, and, and there is something very specific that I'd like to talk about with regard to color okay. and that changing, because I don't know how the painting is going to turn out. Okay. And I try to guide it with the color, but I use, you know, I mix compliments, not um, on the palette, but on the painting. Okay. And, um, and for example, if I put uh, a red on a green, and then I put uh, uh, another color on top of that, it just makes it come alive. Mm -hmm. And I can actually show you that on yeah. the paintings. And, um, and that's a mystery, and, and it's uh, atmospheric, and um, uh, it's what I love. Well, it's it's, it's luminous. Too, right? yeah. Yes, yes. And, and, and oddly enough, I feel like there's so much about color that I don't know. You know? Well, there's so much about color that we can't see as human beings. Well, yeah, and we see it differently. Sure. You know? You mean each person sees yes. it differently? Yes. Yeah. Yes. That's true. And so I don't have a, a hierarchy. I mean, I tend to love reds and blues, and now I'm loving green, but um, I. I I don't think it's a color sense necessarily that makes me add a particular wash okay. of color. It's more of an experiment. Okay. You know, I want to see what this looks like next to that. It sounds like you, know, you have a feeling reaction. It, to it is. It so, is. It's very visceral. Drives, yes. Yeah, that drives the next step. Yes. 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 And so at the end, you know, I'm. I, uh, some people think my color is challenging, um, and some people love my color, and I. I try and not be judgmental, you know, because it is what it is. And, yeah. and let's see, you know, that's my, my modus. We're back. That was great. Um, could I say one thing? Absolutely, we're gonna bounce it over to you. Um, okay. Um, yeah, you I'm not really in love with green. It's a hard <laughs> color to work with. Okay, fair. <laughs> I wanted to say that. We'll take it. Um, well, thank you. And thank you again to Mark for the filming and Susan for sharing Absolutely. your time and your space with us. Um, Susan, I do want to more formally bounce it over to you just to, if you'd like to share any few remarks after the film to, as we start um, the Q&A with the audience. Um, Feel free to. Well, um, uh, people might be a little bit baffled when I said that I studied moder modernism at Berkeley, and I did, but I also took other classes in art history. It just, it was really great. So I want to clear that up too. Okay, noted. Thank you. Um, you have so many wonderful, um, we went in a lot of different directions. So I want to actually just open it up to folks in the audience. If you were struck by anything that came up for you in the video, if you have a particular question, please feel free to, you can raise your hand, you can unmute yourself, put it in the chat. Um, we'd love to field some questions now. It's hard to be the first person to ask a question. Tom, yay, go ahead. <laughs> I'm not shy. 
So uh, one, I have two questions. One is a quick answer, I think. What program do you like to use when you do your digital? Procreate. Campaign? Procreate. Procreate? Yeah. And, yes, uh, a very another... high learning curve there with oh. that app, but it's good. Okay. And um, so I'm getting, well, you do the digital work, which I know it's interesting. It comes at the end of the day and it's so different from everything yes. else you're doing during the day. It's very and then you're going to go to sleep. So things can come up, I think. But uh, me, as far as medium goes, I saw early gouache work and you spoke a lot about watercolor. Do you use oil, acrylic, pastel ever uh, extensively? Not that you've used it in your art career. No, um, I, I did when I was young. I painted with oil and I've never used acrylic. And so it's always been pretty much water-based paint and digital work now. And, and the digital work, if I can say this, um, in Philadelphia, which is a great city for uh, realism or uh, perceptual painting, you know, the academy, um, when I do the digital drawings, I kind of view, I feel like I'm an eager student uh, because it, there are so many accomplished artists in that field um, that uh, I kind of feel really young in that way. Um, and it's no problem for me to go to sleep after I, I do that work. I was just saying that it gives your brain a chance to process what you just did on the computer. They say well, we're sleeping, we're processing you know, what you thought about before you went to sleep. Um, I stopped thinking about that. And I listened to Dharma talks by my favorite monk. And so that just takes me into another world. And then I process that the next day, really, the, the next morning I go, actually, I make more than one. Um, and um, I, uh, I decide the next morning what I did the night before and kind of go through that if that makes sense. Oh yeah, great, good. Thanks so much, Tom. Thanks, Susan. Sure. I think mm -hmm. I saw, is there another flicker of a hand out in the audience here or a comment that anyone would like to make? I have another question. Okay. <laughs> well, everyone else is thinking about it. <laughs> I hope so. Tom, go ahead and then we'll the hand. Hand. Let, let the other person talk. Carrie has a question. It looks like we have a uh, question um, from Danila in the chat that came in, actually. So Danila, then we'll bounce over to Carrie, then back to you, Tom. Um, the question is, do the digital drawings inform the abstracts? Um, yes, they do. And I can give you um, a good example, I think. Most recently, I've been putting a lot of vertical um images along with the landscapes. And when I do that, these vertical sort of poles or columns, I'm thinking of um, um, Barnett Newman, who I've also been looking at a lot lately. And, and, uh, and so there, you know, that's sort of a remote uh, connection, but it's there nevertheless. And I'm always looking for ways um, and ideas, uh, always, that just goes on constantly. Thanks, Susan. Mm -hmm. um, Carrie, did you have a question? You, yes, I have a question. Great. Susan, when you do your series, because they are series, um, yes. the ones the ones that I saw are the ones that are like behind you in the in your place where you're sitting now, the, the blue one with the red center, and many of them are circular. So when you do a series, do you do that by intention? You start, you're working on yes. this circle series? And uh, then you, yeah. you, do you ever get to a point where you finish that? Or um, is it I don't think it can be finished, but it, I, I refer to them as light rings. And, um, and actually I'm thinking that I might revisit that particular uh, uh, subject. Um, recently, I've been really involved in spirals and waves. Yes. And, um, but, uh, and, and, and I just started a couple of um, pillars and, and that's all, that's brand new, but it's the same technique. Mm -hmm. um, yes, I do series, I work in series and I go back 
and work on the so same you ba bounce back and forth so when you have yes, those you. those way mm -hmm. the, the sort of wavy things that are vertical yes that might be for what two or three weeks four months well the big ones uh a month maybe well, i mean the, yeah. when you're not uh, you, the time really so i can't say no, for I, sure i'm trying to understand how 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 that consumes you you've talked a lot about passion yes and how much you love it i mean when you start on your on your curve on those spiral sort of yes. things does that just take you for several months at a time or and then something else bounces back in or i'm, I'm just trying to understand well what's going i on make here. several in in several months months um i there's not one painting that i i would work on for as long for longer than a month I see. um yeah if that answers okay. your question sort of i was just trying to understand when you talk about passion if it's passion that drives you and when that passion for that design sort of thing runs sort of begins to fade do you just allow yourself to, to move on and then that might come back to you well, because yes. it seems, seems to me what you've been saying all day is that the passion is really your your motor. Well, it's my drive. It's my drive. It's my interest. Mm -hmm. Okay. Good. Thanks. Uh -huh. Thanks, Gary. Passion is definitely a theme that came forward for sure. And I loved what you had said, Susan, about um, almost, you know, being in a state of wonder around the work, which I think... You name, I think the thing that I'm struck by is that you're able to name the the sort of ineffable quality of being an artist so well. And as I listen to you speak, you. I, I think about, you know, yes, that's that's you know, that's what I wanted to say about it, or that's exactly the feeling, right? That being captured or enchanted by something, or um, so I think what Carrie, what you're talking about, being, you know, really just sort of fully immersed in the scene mm -hmm. for a stretch of time. Um, I love that idea of being in a state of wonder and um, yeah, and about your own work thinking. and the world. Yeah, um, I, I want to say this, that um, right now, especially in our culture, we're so bombarded by everything, really, um, that uh, I don't believe most people have a lot of time to be just alone all day long, all night long. Uh, alone you know for a week or whatever and and uh i think it's important especially for an artist to ha to dig into yourself and find out what you're about and what you want to say and 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 offer hopefully offer something to the culture of art uh in a meaningful way that's adding instead of repeating let's say mm. even though i'm a big repeater i repeat all the time <laughs> Thanks, Susan. Um, Tom, well, Tom, I think had one more question and then Mark. I back can over. go at the end when, okay. when, when people run out of questions. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Tom. <laughs> uh, Mark, go ahead. Um, Mark can't hear you. Nope, you Mark. muted yourself. Mark is having technical difficulties. I think it's your headphones. You hear me now? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, well, I'll just say, um, Susan. Thank you, Mark. Just, thank you. Thank you. I just wanted to, um, you know, say uh, what a pleasurable time Lauren and I had um, doing this with you. And, you know, for for those who may not be, who may not know Susan sort of um, personally, you know, for me, the... Um, what what came through and we visited your house a couple of times and uh your exuberance for um for for doing your work is just sort of um is massive is what i can say and so i think that um and i like it's sort of building on what you just said about sort of uh feeling a sort of sense of responsibility for um for you know, pushing yourself and pushing your work into the world and um, and creating conversation that way. Um, and so on that note, I don't think this, it didn't kind of make it in, this little section didn't make it into the video, but um, you talked about at the start, um, 
the joy of doing sort of these uh, smaller uh, uh, sort of more itinerant works and the fact that they don't have to go anywhere or be seen, um, that they're kind of yours. And I kind of wanted to ask on the flip side, um, because you mentioned it when we when we were there about how you feel about sending your work out into the world and um, what kind of uh, what that does for you and whether you sort of um, feel, you know, a responsibility to do that or how do you regard that? And of course, you have a gallery representation as well. So, um, yeah, can you just sort of speak to that? Well, yeah, I love to share it. I mean, if anybody wants to see those little ones, I'm happy to share it. I, I, uh, I just, uh, I think that's part of it. And, and um, I've taken my share of hits uh, with regard to, uh, uh, with regard to responses to my work, but. Um, you know, I, I'm thinking of a funny, not a funny, but an interesting um, aspect of my childhood uh, on the Italian side of my family, we would get together in a group and um, people would share like my my relatives, my father, my uncles and aunts, they would uh, play music. And I would play the guitar, which nobody understood Bob Dylan in that family, but um uh, so that it was like kind of sharing and and that really set in with me. So uh, it might be that that's where that comes from, th th this desire to share, you know, it, it just is there. Thanks, Susan, and thanks, Mark, for that thanks. question. Um, appreciate that a lot. And that is always the question, right? Like how much do we put of ourselves do we put out there? What, how do we reconcile feedback? You know, sometimes it's wonderful. Sometimes it's it. ambivalent. It's hard, yeah. right? Yeah. I yeah. see. Um, but, you I, know. Oh, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, no, go ahead. Um, I was, well, I, I was going to say it's hard. And I don't think of myself as a networker. I mean, Charlie really did help me a lot with that. But I'm learning. Um, and, and I want my work to get out. Uh, but I can't can't spend all my time doing that because it it really is difficult for me to just network. I like I said, I'm a solitary person. Uh, so I need to manage that. Um, but I don't want to be just all by myself painting and having it go nowhere. Right. If that okay. makes sense. Well, I'm so glad you're sharing it with all of us today. Um, it's such a treat. Yeah, my and pleasure. <laughs> Um, we have a question, a hand raised. Paige and Emmett Lee, go right ahead. Hi, this has been a wonderful talk. Um, what really Thank struck you. me was when you're talking about the process of creating, and I'm reading a book right now called Deep Work, which is all about like taking time and completely focusing into the work that you're doing, which most of us cannot do. And right. I wanted to ask you about the difference from early in your career to where you are now, because it sounds like you have created an amazing process space for yourself, where you really give yourself time all during the day to let things come to you. Is that something that has changed within your career? No, not at all. If anything, it's grown. And I don't know why. It just I'm just lucky. I think it's luck. I have a lot of luck and and um, I've had a lot of luck uh, uh, in my whole life. And so basically I feel pretty grateful. And and um, I, I just think art is a wonderful thing to study. And oh, one thing I wanted to say about the about the art history and and that is and it's a very firm opinion that I have. And that is the people going to art school right now don't get enough of it you know, maybe one or two classes. And, you know, that's not much. And so I do think we have a responsibility to figure out what in the world was going on before us, uh, in a way. I mean, I remember one time in Philadelphia, I had a show with a woman. And um, she was very, her work was really good. But it was right, it, it was almost cubist, you know, when the Cubists did the their work. And I'm not sure that she knew uh, about that. And I think those kinds of mistakes can easily happen. 
you know, where you're just not informed, you know, you think what you're doing is brand new and all of a sudden you realize that it's been done before or somebody else is doing it. And um, I don't know. I mean, that's I'm I'm a rugged individualist in that way. So that that could be part of it. Well, I think I was also trying to ask about how you have created that time for yourself in your career, because I think a lot of us try to do the work and then your life gets in the way. Right. And it just seems like you've done such a good job of making these spaces for creativity very purposefully. And I I was wondering if that has always been part of your process or was that something that you learned and grew into that finding space and quiet and because it's just hard in real life. Yeah, I know. And I was fortunate because I, uh, my husband, Charlie was a very quiet person. And I can say that we, we lived in quiet together. Um, he did his work and I did mine. And, you know, that's a part, a lot of that is just fortunate circumstance. You know, it's just fortunate and teaching. I love teaching. In fact, I think I'm the one who learned the most by teaching art, drawing to, you know, students who, uh, who want to learn drawing or have to learn it in the profession they're going into. I taught at, um, Philadelphia University. And so there were students in architecture and fashion design and textile design. And I I just learned. And uh, and so I still feel that I'm an eager student as of that. And so that teaching was part of it. I mean, that it's all part of it in a way. And art. Really, um, like who was it? Ad Reinhardt or Ellsworth Kelly? There's art and there's everything else, and everything else is everything else. Um, so I I sort of abide by that personally. Thank you so much. That's wonderful. Mm-hmm. Thanks, yeah, Matthew. thank Thanks. you. And, um, Excuse me, can I get, ask a question? Yeah, go ahead, Matthew. Can you speak? Hi, Matt. Hello. Uh, can you speak about your uh, cloud-like rendering process? How does this happen? My what? I'm As sure. you go through the gradients yeah. of the colors, yes, and they're so bright and they just fade. Um, yes, that's another thing that I was born with, I guess, because I just started doing it, and I had, and if it, uh, my earlier gouache paintings really was sort of based on the same thing because I would just put down dots of one color and then slowly change it to another color so that you could get that gradation. And for some reason, I really like gradations. I like to look out at the um, at the horizon and see the change of blue in the sky and, and watch it change throughout the day. And so gradations, uh, I, I think that's an important thing. And and the precision, that's all just a given. It's just what I'm able to do. Does that answer it, Matt? Yeah, I just uh, used to work maybe in a horizontal uh, horizontal line. And, and when you do circles and, and uh, fractured gradations, um, yes. you just continue yes. these lines. Uh, it's, it's just fascinating. So... You know, someone might airbrush this or something. You get your whites so white. Yeah, and there's no white in my paintings. There's not what the, there is no white. I the the tint I you can barely see the first tints. So you're I kind of don't like feel. You're interrupting white and then bringing it back and highlighting it so intensely. Um, but the way you get there has always been so fascinating to me. Uh, you know. Shut up there, but oh, thank you. To speak to it. Wow. Yeah. Well, all that's just uh, well, uh, the changing from the glyphs, if that's what you're referring to, the horizontal lines or whatever. Um, there is this expansiveness that hit me, and so that's why I'm really just kind of using one subject, for lack of a better word, and um, and I very well may go into a more fractured uh, sort of using a grid, which I used to use all the time, but not right now, not right now. I want to continue on with what I'm doing and see if I can develop it even more. 
Thanks, Susan. Thanks, Matthew. Um, Stuart, you're, uh, we see your hand. Go ahead. Good morning, Susan. Hi, Stuart. Thank you. So wonderful to see you in your studio. Um, kind of along that line, I mean, I have a, a couple questions, I guess, but the one I just thought of is um, I, I've always enjoyed the way the colors speak to each other and the way Matt was referring to even just the glyphs in the beginning. Um, they'd be very contrasty to some of the background colors. And now with the gradients, they just seem to kind of talk to each other as they kind of um, emanate. I hope so. They do. Uh, have there been like challenges with certain colors communicating or like? Yes. Yes. Like, like I said, right now I, I'm, I'm struggling with greens and um, uh, that's all I can say. Some off, not often, but there are times when paintings just don't work out. And, you know, with watercolor, I don't go back in and change. It's, it's like a, a performance in a way where I just have, I do it and then it turns out and, and it is what it is. And, and sometimes they're better and sometimes they're not. And, um, and I, I do struggle with color, uh, but putting them, you know, strange colors next to each other and then all, and then seeing it all at once is, um, it fascinates me. Really does, because there's so many colors. There's so, you know, there must be a hundred layers in each painting um, of, of color. And they all have a relation to each other. And, and they at, do. What, at what point in the process do you start to like realize that they're working? I mean, do you, like you said- After you it's done? <laughs> because, you know, I can be in the middle of a painting and not like it. And then I hit on a color to add and all, all of a sudden it makes it work better. You see what I'm saying? Yeah, that's really cool. Mm -hmm. That's why you have to finish the process. That's right. Yes. Which is the rectangle or the square of the page. The limit of your wall. That's right. I, and I was going back to the teaching. Um, is that something that you really miss? I, I've noticed a lot of. Um, yes, I do. Uh, photographers will tend to seem to do a lot of the work in the beginning and then at the end kind of teach the rest of their life. And um, I kind of like the way you had teaching in the middle. Yes, yes. You really yeah. missed Well, it was, it was really good. I don't want to teach formally anymore. I mean, I'm too old for that and I'm too tired and I want to stay home and do my work. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think I find other avenues, like I'm teaching myself now with the digitals and it is an endless world. I mean, just think about it. You can put any kind of shape or form or color or space or whatever your heart desires, you can kind of explore. And so it's this thing of, of uh, uh, not multitude, that's not the right word, but just everything uh, you can tune in and, and explore. And, uh, and so with the digital drawings, I'm teaching myself perceptual art, making space, making things flat, understanding angles and understanding how much color to use and, and all of those things that go into the very basics of art that artists have been doing forever. And, and, uh, and, and I'll say again, I don't think enough of us really practice uh, uh, working from life for lack of a better phrase. Uh, I, I think there's a lot in there that can inform ab abstract art. So um, thank yeah. you, Susan. I would argue that we're all getting um, a delightful education this morning here in this talk talk, <laughs> which is wonderful. Um, and I saw Daniela, your hand, and then I see Karen's uh, hand after that. So go up, go right ahead. Thank you. Yeah, I'm. I love your work, Susan. Thank you for oh, this talk. You. And um, I, I have two questions. One is a sort of technical question as a fellow watercolor painter. If you put anything between your multiple glazes to keep them from lifting. Um, um, and then the other question um, has to do with if you have noticed your work, because your work is such a response to your relationship with the land. And as our, our earth is shifting in, in dramatic ways, I'm curious if you've noticed your work shifting um, conceptually or visually in response. Um, so are you asking me, is that a kind of um, 
cultural or the time we're living in with climate change and so on? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So I, I will talk, I'll talk to that. I, I think it's all happening. And I think all those different cultural things that are happening right now, the hashtag me too, the black lives matter, the climate change, that's all happening. But I can't, I just don't, I don't, think about it that way. I try to think about it in a larger way. Okay, if we're finished, then we're finished. You know, and and um, I'll, I'll, I do the best I can to be a good human being and, uh, and uh, not have a big carbon footprint or whatever, but I don't spend my time thinking about that. I read the New York Times every morning. I try to keep myself informed, but I, I am not an activist in that way, not at all. Not at all. I can't. I mean, I want to think about art. It's it's much more. It's fun. It's good. I want to say also too. I keep saying fun. It's joy, really. It's just a feeling of joy. So thanks, Susan. Thanks, yeah. Camilla. Um, let's bounce over to Karen's question, and we might have a question in the chat. Um, Karen, why don't you go ahead with your question? Okay. Hey, can you hear me? Yes. Okay. Thanks. Um, I love your painting, Susan. They are gorgeous. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> um, I was really curious about your process that you go, you know, that you have throughout your day. It's a very specific yeah. process, it sounds like, and you have, it's almost like a I schedule and you almost have like certain things you do at certain times in certain rooms. Um, and I was wondering like how you arrived at that and also what, um, how does it, you know, how does it play into your art um, and and sort of um, like, why, why do you have that process, I guess? Why do I have it? I don't know. I, I don't know why but I just have it. And um, I've always sort of been that way. Uh, um, yeah, I mean, I, I can't, I can't answer that question other than that's really what I do. And it's what I like to do. And, you know, I, I can say that I can't spend eight hours a day laying in watercolor washes. I, uh, my arms can't take it. And um, my focus can't take it. And I, I'm, uh, mm -hmm. I'm uh, in the last quarter of my life. And so I have to uh, protect my eyes and, 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 and go around and do other things. Now, I could just have my, my paintings as my practice or, or activity or whatever. But I, I like to keep it going. And so my way of keeping it going is my lifestyle. Mm -hmm. Right. Interesting. Thanks so much, Karen. Um, and we are getting close to the end, speaking of time, getting close to the end of our time in our attack talk today. I want to just, we probably have time for maybe one more question from the audience. Um, does anyone have a question? Tom, you had a question that you were hanging on to. I don't know if you still have it. It looks like Matt, you also had another question. Oh, Tom, you're muted. We can't hear you. I'm sorry. I, I had questions in case things sort of died down, but they did the opposite, which is okay. Fine. How about Matt's question? Matt, go ahead. Can we speak to your dailies for a second? Sure. I love them. Um, you've been putting yourself through such exercises and <laughs> education, but you know. Um, and your teacher, this huge mass <laughs> that's, you know, uh, showing about light and darkness and yes. uh, weather and whimsy. Yes, yes. They're all just amazing. Uh, Thank you. And, may and maybe uh, more typical of you with landscapes. But then you came in the house, you started doing pillows and a couch and a cute little watering pail and just nailing these little, uh, you know, sensitive compositions at, at, 
as well as a name and a theme. I, you know, I kind of never experienced anything like it. I mean, that's that's why I love your work. I, I, Thank you, Matt. I guess it is the dedication of living it that helps you really. Uh, I put that into your work. I'll just see you. Well, there is one thing. I'm glad you brought that up in a my way. My time there. Good. Uh, uh, the, um, I do see a lot of work that's uh, what you would call representational. There's a lot of it everywhere. And um, there aren't too many representational paintings or realistic paintings of inside, outside. And that is the fact of my living and where I am and what I'm looking at. And why not? You know, and I do, I look outside. I like to look outside and I'm inside looking out. I'm not, I'm not a plain air painter um, or, or digital draftsman. <laughs> so, so that's that. Thanks, Matt. Thanks, Susan. Um, and we do have to wrap up for today. Um, thank you. I want to just take a moment to say just thank you again, Susan, for sharing so much with all of us. Truly, it's been a delight. And thanks to Mark um, for your videography, filming, directing, producing skills. We couldn't do this without you. It's really adding a lot to our community. Um, and we really appreciate it. We appreciate everyone for taking the time out this morning. Plus, yes. Susan, um, and it's it's uh, apropos, isn't it? Today, we moved our clocks forward. We're really talking today about art as a marker of time, in a way. <laughs> and I yeah. think that, that is um, just a, a lovely connection and a tie-in. I'm going to put Susan's website in the chat for everybody. And so not updated, but it's it's a it's good, it's a good representation of my work. It's a snapshot there for sure. So please take a look and see. Um, and then again, shameless plugging our March 31st uh, opening for viewpoint at the Tau Center for the Arts in the Encore Gallery from five to seven. Please join us. It's going to be a wonderful show. Um, please join us for future TAC Talks. The next one, as I mentioned earlier, is Robert Horline, which will be happening in May. And we're delighted to uh, announce that. And then I just um, wanted to quickly open the floor in case anyone has anything else that you'd like to share. Do you have a show coming up? Do you want to plug, put something in the chat? Um, we're we're welcome to that. Um, and if you'd like to email us that information as well, we're delighted to help spread the word about fellow artist um, offerings in the community. We are a group created by artists. We are for artists. And that's really our mission, our core mission. So if anyone has anything you'd like to share, feel free. And if not, oh, Carrie, looks like you have something. Go ahead. You're muted. Dog on it. OK. I'd like to call your attention to uh, Danilo Brumold's work here in Albuquerque. She's awesome. at Exhibit 208 on Broadway, 208 Broadway. Um, it's a lovely, wonderful exhibit. It's already had great success with it, having sold four of like 15 paintings or something crazy like that on Friday night. Fantastic. So you can look her up. Uh, I think it's Donella, uh, Rumble com and check it out and get more information. Awesome. She's our, one of our original TAC people. Thank you so much, Carrie. Um, yes, sounds amazing. And thank you. Uh, thank you again. We're going to yes. wrap up for today. Please stay tuned. Thank you, Susan. Everyone be well. Enjoy thank the rest you. of your Sunday. And you can catch this, share this talk with your networks. We'll post it online on our YouTube channel. Bye, everybody. Bye, Thank you. Yeah. Thank you.